evil, not evil, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, today we finish Joshua. And so we will have gone through Genesis, Exodus, and now Joshua. And what has happened is the people have entered the land and they've conquered it. What we've skipped over, we're not doing Joshua as in-depth as we've done the other uh, books, but the wars have gone to the south and to the north, and everywhere they've gone, the people of Israel have taken back the promised land. And that promised land has been divided into the 12 tribes, which represent the 12 children of Isaac, whose name was changed to Israel. Of course, the children of Levi, they're the priests. They don't get land. They live within all the lands. And the two children of Joseph make up one tribe. They take up two inherited lands. But what we're going to see is that Israel never really moves into what it was told to move into. You'll see here in the white, just to, the, to my left of Judah is Philistia. They never conquered the Philistines. Up around where it says the Arameans. They never really go what God had given them to the north, to the east, and to the south. Sorry, yeah, to the east and south. They never take what they were told to take. They take some of it. And they leave those people within the land. And as Joshua leaves, gets old, gets ready to die, we're going to read what he says to the people. And we'll learn from it. This is Joshua's farewell address. We're going to move quickly to it because really, as you hear it, it speaks for itself. After a long time had passed and the Lord had given Israel rest from their enemies around them, Joshua, by then a very old man, summoned all Israel, elders, leaders, judges, and officials, and said to them, I am very old, (laughs) which is a great way to start, right? You yourselves have seen everything the Lord God has done to all these nations for your sake. Your witnesses, you saw when we were in the desert, you saw how it was there, you saw with the tents and the tabernacles and how we've moved, you saw the way the Lord led you across the Jericho, I'm sorry, across the Jordan to Jericho. You've seen the conquest, you've seen the good, the bad, you've tasted the manna, and now you're eating the fruit of the land, you've seen everything, it was the Lord, your God, who fought for you. It wasn't you. Remember how I've allotted as an inheritance for your tribes all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan, the Mediterranean Sea, and the West. The Lord your God himself will push them out for your sake. He'll drive them out for you. You'll take possession of their land as the Lord God promised you. Be very strong. So the first thing to remember is the Lord did it. Second thing to remember is within that, be strong. And how do I be strong? Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Don't associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. Israel is living out a type of the way the church is living in the world. And God is saying to Israel, you're coming back to your land, but it it, it hasn't been your land for 420 years. Remember, God is judging the people living there, and he's routing them. He's casting them out. They, they, They have missed their warnings, the same warnings he's going to give to Israel. And so they're out. Israel is in. But the remnant is dangerous. And the Lord is saying to the people, don't fall for their idols. Christians who come to the Lord, we, we, we come to realize we're sinners and we need salvation, but we're left in the world. We're not of the world, but we're in it. Be careful to obey. Be strong, but don't associate with these nations that remain among you that, or invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. You're to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of you routes a thousand because the Lord fights for you. So this is Joshua doing his farewell address to the nation. And these are the things that are important to him. 
Obey what's in the word. Don't fall for the idols. Hold fast to the Lord and remember he fights for you. Love the Lord your God. Be very careful to love the Lord your God. More than you love yourself is the implication. But if you turn away and ally yourselves with survivors of these nations that remain among you, if you intermarry with them and associate with them, if you take on their values, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they'll become snares and traps for you, whips on your back, thorns in your eyes, until you perish from this land. I mean, that's just. If you do the same abomination, sacrifice your children to Molech. Sacrifice your women to sex cults. Forget the love of the Lord and what's right. Become sodomites like the culture that's there now. You know, as I say these things, I'm shocked because we sacrifice our children. We've become sodomites and sex cults. And just as I say it, I'm thinking, I can't not speak with the spirit of Joshua and warn myself and warn you about becoming like the culture and how dangerous that is and how much the culture will hate you for saying what I'm saying. Amen? Amen. But I'm not going to say it. Do you pray for me? Because I don't want to stop saying it. Not because I like confrontation, but because it's so obvious that we live in a time where, where the Lord is warning to us since 1970 when we said it's okay to kill babies. And we somehow just fall in step. Reject this stuff. It's okay to objectify women. Why? We're sacrificing babies and women in this culture. Amen? What's the God of the belly if it isn't about these things? How are we any different? This isn't judgmentalism. This is... This is Jesus is warning us. God has long warned us. Be different. Be set apart. So love the Lord in his righteousness that we begin to hate the things he hates. Joshua was saying, Joshua was the one who looked out into the land and said, we can take it. Why? Because the Lord promised it to us. Everybody else said, there's giants in the land. Well, now it's 40 years later and Joshua was right. And he's saying, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. You know, with all your heart and soul that not one of the good promises the Lord gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one promise of the Lord to the Israelites has failed. And not one promise of Jesus to you will fail. Not one. Amen? Believe it. Believe it better than you see it. Believe it more than you feel it. The Lord your God is God, and His Word is more important even, and I talked about it earlier, than your senses. Your senses matter. But know this in your mind, that God will not fail. Smell fails. Sight fails. Hearing what? But the promises of God will not fail. I regret every time I've said no to what God told me to do, and I've never regretted every time I've said yes. And I've done both this week. Just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised you have come to you, so he will bring the evil things. Until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you, If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you, and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. Basically saying, I removed others for their rebellion. I can, and he does, remove them. That's what the captivity is about. 
For a generation, Israel believes it and they'll do it, but they didn't teach it well to their children and to their children and to their children. And such at one point, they are taken out of the land by Assyria and Babylon for captivity. And then they're brought back and then there's a moment and then Jesus. And I'm going to show you this on the map. But as Joshua discovered when he met the angel of the Lord, he said, whose side are you on, us or them? And the angel said, I'm on the Lord's side. Because God has an agenda bigger than this world. Remember it when your agendas get ground into powder, O oh Lord. Because that's when we can even say when God is disciplining us. And when we feel wounded and hurt and broken, broken down, and we say, what's it come to? We realize, no, you are good, Lord. Sweet are the adversities the Lord brings upon us if it gets us back to reality. I want to be about his agenda. Joshua 24, Joshua assembled the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, officials. They presented themselves before God. He said to the people, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. And they review the big story. That's my writing there, the big story. Here it is. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham. So we're going back to chapter 11 of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And Joshua is saying, Abraham's father, Terah, lived beyond the Euphrates River, and worshipped other gods. He was a pagan. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him through Canaan and gave him many descendants. This is the book of Genesis. I gave him Isaac, his grandson, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I'm sorry, Isaac, his son, Jacob and Esau, his grandson. I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau, but Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there. He's basically reviewing the history of the people. Remember, God said to Abraham, I will make you a nation, and from this nation I will bless all nations. To you and Sarah, Sarah's 75, Abraham, you're 75, your good is dead. And from you two, not Hagar, not the other people, from you two, I'll make a nation. And from this nation, I will make a people. And from this people, I'll I will bless all nations, talking about Jesus. But the promise was to Abraham, and it led through uh, Isaac, and it led through Jacob, and it led through Moses and Aaron. It led into Egypt. It led into 400 years of slavery. It led into this miraculous rescue through the Red Sea. It led to the time in the wilderness. I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you, and you took possession of the land. Joshua is reviewing the history. This stuff happened. God was with us. It's a plan. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hevites, Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you. Weird things happened. Hail, bees, fire. You did not do it with your own sword and bow. Some of the armies killed themselves. You're my precious child. You have a message for the world, but you're not so precious. I did it for you. Know who and what you're for. Understand the grace that God is giving, but do something with it. I gave you a land on which you did not toil, cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. And so he's telling the story. And so if you're with me here, I'm going to point to this board. Over here at Ur, I'll put a star there. That's where Terah was, Abraham. That's where Nimrod, remember we talk about those chapters of Genesis. This is where the early peoples were and, and, and where Noah's children split out into the world. This is real. This is fact. This dust is still there. This is your story. And those people came to where it's green now. That's where Abraham settled and built his family of 70. But, but God sold Joseph into slavery, but it was that selling into slavery that allowed Joseph to show Egypt where the food would be during seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And that's what led the Israelites, 70 people, down into Egypt. And in 400 years, they became 2 million people. And also, they became slaves, threat to Egypt. 
But this is where God chose to, to build the, the family of those 12 sons. And it's through the blood of, of the Passover that they were able to escape and through the Red Sea that they were able to make their way into the desert and back into their land. I'm telling you the journey of the Jews, which is the journey of Jesus. Because when they didn't listen to the land, they were carried off to Nineveh. And then the computer died. <laughs> it's never a good sign. Do you know what happens next? Yeah, we sing apparently. Do you know what happens next? So, so what have we covered? We've covered all the way to before the people are carried off into captivity. There's 400 more years of time that we have to go through. We have to, the, the people live in a land and they're ruled by judges. But they want to be like the other nations. What do the other nations have? Kings. And so they want to have kings like all the other nations. And their kings lead them astray. And the people just follow after other gods and they pick back up sodomy and child killing and all the things that God pukes them out of the land. And they're, they're, they're destroyed. They're just down to a remnant. And then Ezra and Nehemiah tell the story of how the people came back. And to that broken people, now ruled by Rome, appeared Jesus, who was crucified in that land, on that mountain, promised to Abraham. This is our story. And then those people were cast out again. And what they do? They took with them the gospel everywhere. Do you see that story? That's your story. The old, this promise was made to Abraham. And I'm hearing it in Paola, Kansas. It's curses and it's blessings. Now, I know this. I'm not saved by keeping the covenant. The guy on the cross kept the covenant. Amen? I'm saved by believing in him and applying his blood here. And I'm hearing the Lord say, everything I said through Joshua, I say to you, don't. Don't think it's a, it's, you have this power. It's been done for you. Jesus did it for you. He fought for you. Now love him. And the way you show that you love him is you obey him. And you don't obey him perfectly, but you should. But, but obey him. Love him and stop sinning. And stop looking like the world. Because you're not of this world. It's not where you're going to live the rest of your eternity. That's in heaven with the Father, just like Jesus. Every step Jesus took, he's taking me three days behind him. My hope is in Jesus, is yours. Here's what Joshua says. Now fear the Lord. Fear him. Fear him the way an, an astronaut fears losing oxygen. Fear being separated from God. Throw away the gods of your ancestors. If the Holy Spirit is active at all in your life, he's telling you what you need to throw away. Do it. Write it down and do it. And get somebody and be accountable to them. I'm not going to do this anymore because it doesn't glorify God or me. I'm going to stop being bitter and hateful. I'm going to stop watching this TV show. I'm going to stop using the internet the way I do. I'm going to stop spending money the way I do. I'm going to stop lusting after clothes the way I do or food the way I do. I don't know what it is. You do. Throw it away. If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you and you'd rather have the things of the world, then decide. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And do you realize what you say when you're saying that? As for me and my house, we will do the things we need to do. And people answered, far be it from us. There, yeah, Amen. Hallelujah, brother. Preach it. We believe it. Yep, the Lord did those things. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. And some do and some don't. And Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord, which is true. He is a holy God. And on that side of Easter, more so. He will not forgive your rebellions and your sins on that side of Easter. It's only through Jesus that they're forgiven. 
And how is Israel saved? Israel will be saved through Jesus. God will work that out. The same way he worked it out for me in Paola, Kansas, hearing this story just like you. Jesus is the one who wins my forgiveness. I don't. No, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said, your witnesses against yourself. This is all preparing us to understand why the cross was put into the earth on Mount Moriah the day that the past met the future and time took on its meaning. Throw away the foreign gods. Throw away anything that takes your heart from the Lord. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them the decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone, and he set it there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. And that was the sign. And today, the sign for the believers is this cross, what it represents. In 1 Kings, Ahab sent word throughout all Israel. He assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. I'm going way ahead, but I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you another moment of decision. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. <clears throat> but the people said nothing. It reminds me of the time when Jesus said, I'll tell you who I'm from if you answer one question. On whose authority did John come? From men or from God? And the people say, well, if we say John was from God, then he's going to ask us why we're not listening to him. And if we say he's from the people like we believe, the people will stone us because they believe he's from God. So what do they say? Eh, can't know. Yeah, you know. You just don't want to be responsible for your answer. And I say that to you as a pastor. Your sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't deny your sins. We live in a culture that needs Jesus, and it doesn't want to hear about it. Don't let that stop you. As for you and your house, what are you going to do? Don't store treasures on earth, because earth will burn up. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. I know what that's like. How many of you check your retirement balance? Are you, is that sin to do that? No. Where's your heart in it? Where's your heart in? I could, I could point out a million things. And it's not to do this. It's because God is just saying, clear it. It's a waste of time. Do the things that matter. Where is your heart? Where is your eye? The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy... And in the NASB, it translates, if your eye is clear, in the King James, if it trans and the King James is the better version of this one, if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. Listen to this, but, but please do the work here. If you're, to, to have a healthy eye, to see clearly, you can't see two things at once. Does that make sense? Single. Try, try looking over there and over here and walking. And yet, how do we do that? We do that all the time. We're, we're split pants Christians. We got one foot here and one foot there. And when it's time to decide, don't, I can't go any farther. Light or dark, they don't mix well. As I said, I've never regretted a yes to Jesus. I have always regretted every time I've said no. Joshua is saying, choose today what's first. And he's saying it to this nation. And so I'm reporting it to you. What's first in your life? And, and this is good news. Some of you are thinking, oh, you know what? He's right. The Holy Spirit's talking to you and you're thinking, I have fallen for that thing again or that person again or that besetting sin or that... You've just lost your focus. Don't spend any more time regretting it. Spend time following Jesus. Just say, Jesus, thank you. You really are the love of my life. Help me to walk that way. And whatever decisions come, write them down and become accountable for them. I will sell that thing. 
I will get rid of that thing. I will stop saying that thing or doing that thing. Whatever it is. And whatever the cost, consider it like pouring nard on the feet of Jesus. Oh, but I spent $200,000 on that thing that I'm going to get rid of. Pour it on Jesus. Get it out of you. Guess what? You're worth more than $200,000. I don't know why that's the figure. I don't know what it's even referring to. Oh, I've spent so much time doing that thing. Or, or if I say that's wrong now, I have to apologize over here. It's worth whatever it's worth. The truth is whatever it's worth. Live in it. Choose today. Let's pray. Father God, <clears throat> thank you for this word. Help us to hear what you're saying and to love you, to follow you with all that we do. Lord Jesus, I pray for the church that meets everywhere right now in your name. Purify it by your blood, your witness, your word, the power of your Holy Spirit. Purify the preachers and the leaders. Purify this pastor in this place. And continue to have us choose you, Father, in love and in fear. And thank you that in Jesus you chose us. On that night, Jesus said, I, you did not choose me, I chose you. And Lord, this preaching, this word, this spirit has chosen everyone hearing it right now. And now is our chance to respond, Father. And so in prayer, hear us as we say yes to you, whatever it means. Amen.